forging cyber, forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Okay, let's get started. So, we just got finished talking about, <clears throat> in our last episode, we just got finished talking about service-based exploitation. This time, let's talk about client-side exploitation. Client-side exploits, you know, I'd say since about 2005, 2006, that's been the biggest change in hacking. Where before, we used to attack your FTP server, your mail server, your DNS server. We would find the open port, and we would attack that. Today, it's a lot of what are called user interaction exploits, drive-by downloads and things like that. So what you're requiring is you're often requiring the user to click on something to be exploited because the application that's vulnerable cannot be accessed through a logical port. So let's take an example. Something like Internet Explorer or Flash or Java are applications that run locally on the user's desktop <clears throat> or laptop or device, right? Now, when I send the user an email or I coerce him to go to a malicious website and click on something, that Internet Explorer renders whatever I asked him to click on, right? Or maybe that Java runtime environment renders whatever malicious thing I asked him to click on or his Adobe Acrobat reader renders whatever malicious PDF file I asked him to click on. Well, now that he's being exploited, that compromised host is now beaconing, if you remember what we talked about before, beaconing out to the attacker, right? And now the attacker controls that machine. So user interaction exploits are making up well over 90% of the attacks in the landscape today. A lot of people go, well, that's just viruses or malware. They don't think that's the real hacker. Today, this is the hacker, right? This is what you're dealing with. Get past it. All that firewall stuff that we learned years and years ago, you got to let all that ping sweep, port scan, service-based exploitation go. This is where hacking is at today. It's getting the user to click on something, and then once the user clicks on something, whatever application that's client-side that he's using, be it Excel or PowerPoint or QuickTime or Acrobat Reader or Flash or WinZip, it doesn't matter what it is, we exploit that application. So it's still a buffer overflow, but that buffer overflow is happening in a client-side application that can't be accessed by a logical port. Now, from the vulnerability side, remember last week we talked about ping sweep, port scan, banner grab. Well, you can't ping sweep and port scan and find what version of Internet Explorer someone's running. You can't port scan me and go, oh, I'm running Internet Explorer version 10. Can't do that. You can't port scan me and figure out what version of Office that I'm running because Office doesn't listen on a logical port. Right? Office doesn't run on like port 25 or something like that. So, from the vulnerability scanner side, what people do is they usually do what's called a credentialed scan. So, if you're working in your enterprise environment and you're running vulnerability scans, but you're not doing credentialed scans, big mistake. You should be doing credentialed scans in your environment. Credentialed scans are what's going to let you know the outdated versions of Internet Explorer and Office and QuickTime and Shockwave and Flash and Java and all that other stuff, that's really what's being exploited today. A lot of these are called third-party applications. Usually you're going to find in most environments today, third-party patch management is flat-out horrible. Most people will tell you, hey, we do pretty good on the Microsoft patches. But you'll, when you dig a little deeper, you'll find that Adobe, Java, QuickTime, Shockwave, Flash, all that kind of stuff is a hot mess. Straight in there smelling like straight hot garbage. And you'll find that they're getting breached a lot because they don't have patch management around that kind of stuff. So credentialed scans are going to be your way to deal with that. Now from the security side, how do we as pen testers or we as security consultants test that? You're going to be using something like Metasploit, 
with something called SET, Social Engineering Toolkit. The Social Engineering Toolkit allows you to clone a website or craft malicious campaigns to make it look like a malicious website or malicious email that you can send to somebody to get them to click on. That's the hacker way of doing it. The commercial product way of doing it will be a product like FishMe with a PH. So FishMe, it's just fishme.com, P-H-I-S-H-M-E.com, fishme.com. I'm not trying to promote any one vendor. FishMe is just a real popular one. There's other ones that do it too. But what they'll do is you craft these email campaigns with FishMe and they look like LinkedIn or Apple iTunes updates or, you know, the famous UPS thing to go pick up your package or whatever the case may be. And it'll ask you to either enter in your credentials or click an attachment for download. And then when the user does that, it spins up a training message and lets the user know emails of this type are usually used to coerce you to enter your credentials. You should look for these indicators so you, not don't, so you know not to click on things like this. And we use that for training. And you're going to find a lot of enterprise customers really like this kind of stuff because they get metrics, they can increase the complexity of the campaigns and start to figure out, hey, you know what? We're doing a pretty good job with our user awareness training. And our user awareness training is real hands-on with metrics. So we can see, hey, when we spearfish the blah, blah, blah group, we can see that each month they've been getting better as opposed to making somebody watch some boring training video once a year and sign off that they're trained when you're still getting compromised every week. So not that I'm trying to promote FishMe. FishMe, FishMe is just a real popular one. There's plenty of other products out there that do it, but I love the fact that they give you real actionable metrics. You can anonymize who's getting clicked on. You can integrate with Active Directory and say, hey, I only want this group to receive the messages, you know, that sort of thing. And you know that there's nothing malicious running in your environment. It's a great way to start training your users. So I'm hoping that this really kind of gives you a good feel of what's going on with user interaction or what are called client-side exploits because this is the today of hacking. Now, a few videos back when you saw me talk about all that malware analysis stuff, this is the stuff that's getting exploited. You know, when you're doing your malware analysis, this is the stuff you're going to be analyzing. So I'm hoping that this is kind of bringing it full circle for you and really kind of giving you, um, you know, the background information that you need to be better in this game. So I hope this makes sense. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.